Throw Gang, we are joined by the big bushy beard boy, Lauren Schlossman. Ew. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> and myself, the estimated tax emirate, fuck Bernie Sanders, Rand Paul, 2024. I'm why, are you, why are you sacrificing Bernie at that altar, I'm dude? a libertarian now, <laughs> James Harris. <laughs> Welcome to the weekly Burning of the Boys with today's full episode only available on patreon.com slash throwing fits. Lawrence, how was your week? I know we're only two weeks into the new year, yeah. but I've been eating good. I've been back in the gym fucking tossing plates. I've been getting a lot of sleep, growing the beard out, about to go on vacation. I am fucking crushing it right now. You're like Khabib. Yeah. Oh, you're about to go on vacation. Just throw those two weeks in the shitter. Well, I'm about to go to Nothing Florida like, and get COVID. 1,000%. Yeah. My ties and yeah. fucking coconut shrimp. <laughs> um, welcome to the weekly. Oh, I already said that. Before we talk Drake's <laughs> jizzy antics, Kanye Balenciaga, and the best entertainment of 2022 so far. <clears throat> start with a fit check. Yeah. Why don't you start us off, buddy? I had the Aragache came on mules on the roof. Now I got the Versace, real Versace slippers. House slippers, um, the Hayato today, double knee, Cessna inspired with the chair caning on the knees, carpenter pants. These are the only double knees I'll fucking ever wear um, with the hammer. This is for your hammer, by the way. Yeah, no, you know I'm, that? I'm aware. Okay. Oh, I think Jenna, uh, Jenna says uh, a little. Uh, uh, no, I mean, Jenna pod next People week. know we potted with her, but um, there's a hammer story. An undercover T-shirt, which I forgot I had this. Is it like, am I like on my Cardi shit wearing this undercover tee? I don't know, dude. You've always been like a Jun Takahashi fan, right? Jun, Jun Takahashi. Jun Takahashi? Yeah. Not like the crazy shit. And it's gotten a little like You put it on for your people. It's gotten a little very like. All the anime like, jackets. All like pop culture collabs with like Star Wars and shit are a little, it's a little yeah. tough well, there. He, the Star Wars one, I, I guess they've done multiples now, but that was like one of the, he was one of the first guys I feel like that did pop culture collabs in like a tasteful Japanese way. Well, everyone went for, I don't know what they were buying from Jun Takashi. The, the shoes were fire, but Dover Street always had these on crazy sale. I got the, this like, I mean, it's not, it's less than a Kanye Gap hoodie, mm-hmm. but you know, it was like a seventy dollars t shirt down from like two hundred and something. Two hundred dollars? I think so. For like just a basic ass undercover graphic? Yeah, thing? with like a. I mean, this is sick graphic. Like I don't own fucking... any. I don't think I've ever owned any undercover. I don't think they do not have Size even for crazy. me. Even for me, they don't have um, XL in the Japan stores. I was gonna say that's got to be like what a this size is, this five. Is ex- this is an extra large, which is a four, four or five. Four. Do they even make a five? I. Don't I think that's so. the reason I never even was like gonna dip my toe in that pool because like it just doesn't fit. Mm. Uh, well, keep that fucking workout regimen going, buddy. Hell yeah, Helly Hansen Japan cap on the dome piece, and I had a Mizoni Ohm towel wrapped <laughs> up <did>. nicely. <laughs> um, Hanes boxers on the dick and balls, and drinking a DP. Greenpoint's finest. Lawrence, <laughs> a DP. <laughs> what are you fucking Kujin? <laughs> <laughs> Your sister. What do you? <laughs> that dude is fucking everybody's sister. Yo, shout out to that guy. He always shows up. As we can get him on the pod through Nico in one second. Do we want to do that, bro? So he's from where I went to college. Because one of the first things that he uh, oh, recommended... he's from New York State. He's not. He's from, from. He's from Poughkeepsie. Okay. I don't know if he's like in Brooklyn and Staten Island now. He's definitely like doing content there. But he shows up as people you may know, which <laughs> only shows up as people whose like numbers are already like they're already contacting your phone. You so I'm like. You ever you maybe like bought drugs from him or something? Maybe I mean he. Kujin, Kujin. Um, what does Kujin mean? And it's what is that? It's it's their n word. I don't know. <laughs> it's um, just some grease ball shit. Yeah, you just said it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. DP Greenpoint's finest. Lawrence <laughs> Fitchek. A diet bep bep Pepsi. What did I what did I text you? I had what? like some. I texted you about getting you a diet Pepsi, but I fucking. Missable Pepsi? Yeah. It was like, uh, anyway, Beepus? <laughs> anyway. Uh, Beeple? Um, I wore uh, Nike Tom Sachs Mars Yards 2.0s to the crib. Yo, what I do you ha- think of the new ones? Oh, bro. Listen. Terrible, right? It's, and uh, apologies to all the fucking, the you wear, know. It, the no, wear no, testers? No, I was going to say, it, no, no, the new ones are even worse. I was going to say apologies to all, like, the novice, budding John's enthusiast American snipers because it looks like a kill shot, which is, like, the worst sneaker ever. That's what they look like to me, like a souped up kill shot. And they're called kill shots because they kill your shot at getting any bitches. <laughs> Shout out MFA. No um, hoes. Yeah, no hoes. Zero hoes. I have on white socks. I am wearing vintage Carhartt double knees. I have on a big bean uh, video drone um, bootleg. One of the 210 movies I watched in 2021. Yeah, I'm, I'm on my shit. <laughs> okay, you know, go on. 
You love being a fucking cinephile snob, mm-hmm. which honestly, no, I'm not like, a snob. I just yes, love you are. You're just, it's no, fucking. Not a it's, snob. it's it's your taste is so bad that doesn't make see, this mean is, I'm a see, snob. See, incorrect. But you don't watch these movies. There's no way you were watching fucking Le Samurai I while did. not. Yo, you're on your fucking phone the whole time. No, no, I and pre- this is proven by next week's boys only episode with your wife, where she's like, "Yeah, you're just on your fucking phone scrolling no. anytime you sit down to watch a serious movie." No, tell me about uh, Iranian cinema in the 1950s, oh, post revolution. Oh, why don't no? Please tell me. Why don't you educate me? It seems like you're very fucking familiar. Oh well, you know when they had the you know the, when the Shah was uh, before the uh, Muj- Muj- you know. The Mujahideen. Big fire. <laughs> uh, for a movie like La Samurai, that's subtitle, so I can't be on my phone. <laughs> You're on your phone. I'm All not right. on my phone. All right. I have on a white rodeo hat as well, double dipped there, rolly on the wrist, uh, still married, Genopod dropping a week from today. I think it's fucking awesome. I think yeah. people are, are going are gonna to love the balance between me getting my life roasted, which I know everyone wants and expects, and then also like a little insight into a wonderful, beautiful, romantic relationship between two soulmates. It was pretty sweet, and also like you guys are... We were bickering a bit, which one, is nice, oof, yeah, which is what people want. Oh, I, I wouldn't say that. No, you guys, are, you guys are one fucking soul. You're connected, mm-hmm. you know, intrinsically at the metaphorical hip. That's, the, uh, that's my dope-ass chick that I locked down to build a dope-ass life together with. <laughs> I am drinking an espresso style martini by Kahlua in the You've got oh, your jacket. Uh, Needles Barracuda. Yeah. The most oh ni- that you wore in your fit check on TikTok. Yes, How sir. are those performing? Pretty well. Yeah. You getting good feedback? Uh yeah. And I just if you give negative feedback, I'm gonna like your comment as anyway. Are there haters in the letter like, oh, this fit is ass or yeah, whatever? Yeah, and then you go to their fucking shit and they're wearing like they, they are not fitted whatsoever. They have of zero course. sauce. I mean that's that's usually how it goes. No hose, no sauce. Those are usually the loudest people. Um, that is a super rapid fire, complete fit check and drink check. Let's get into the show. All right, so we mentioned the Genopod coming out one week from today. Yeah. It is a fucking doozy. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. It is actually, it's like two hours. Yeah, it's really long. There's video. Yes. Um, upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Exactly. Yeah, honestly, fucking Patreon's killing it right now. Let's keep this fucking streak going, guys. Let's get some likes. Let's get some comments. Let's up those tiers. All right, all right, all right. No, I, can't, all right. I can't fucking of, chill a little bit. Speaking of thirsty, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> speaking of the sauce. S- speaking of super gremlins. <laughs> yo, so this was a news item that was brought to my attention Monday morning, I want to say, by the Discord. The best yeah. fucking Discord. The only Discord that matters is the only podcast that matters. Mm-hmm. Um, I dropped some like celebrity fucking, it was like some Kanye shit. Oh, you know what it was? What? It was a screenshot of the Azalea Banks IG oh. story. Do you believe that that, no, that they're sorry. fucking on H? No. Just, just snorting dog she, food? Like, she's... Like, Azealia Banks is a crazy-ass bitch, which is why people like her. And I know she has, like, hot goss on a lot of celebrities because she runs in, the, in those circles. I do not believe that Julia Fox and Kanye are strung out on heroin. That's well, a she bit didn't say strung stretch. out. They said snorting dog food. Um, right. And someone's like, yo... Not as good as the Drake hot sauce condom. And I was like, what the fuck are you <laughs> talking about? And so they dropped the IG from... Uh, yeah, what is it called? News source, Too Much Hot Tea <laughs> on Instagram. Nice. And the only way to... I'm just going to read this. And like, obviously, you've Please. probably seen this already, but like, it, this is worth reading. Well, I don't know if everyone, if this made it to everyone's feed, but read the blind This is item. worth reading through in its entirety. Chef, do not put this behind the paywall. Allegedly... Okay, quote. Allegedly... Drake and the IG model. Oh, the headline is mm-hmm. IG model suing Drake for burning her pussy with hot sauce. Nice. Right? The caption, the full caption is allegedly Drake and the IG model allegedly met up on Instagram and the two decided to link up a few weeks ago. The model and Drake had a romantic encounter and what happened next what happened next was well, crazy. <laughs> After the party, they went back to his hotel. They smoked weed for a bit and he asked if she wanted to have sex. Nice. She, she said, asked for consent explicitly. Love yeah. that. She said uh, although I think I it's so funny that like that's probably like, this, the third thing he said to her in the <laughs> hotel. She said he was very intent on ensuring things were consensual. Nice. Okay, there you go. Man after my own heart. They started with a bit of foreplay. <laughs> okay. He rubbed and suckered titties for a bit. Hell yeah. He then went to the bathroom and came out with a condom on, which, by the way, like, yo, that- allergic for the bathroom with a condom on, like, butt-ass naked is you very- You think so? You think he came out very- dick on hard just with a condom on? It's a very vulnerable move. What, you think he came out? He's fucking, big scorp. You think he came out torqued up, like, but with hit still like tucked up in his waistband? Uh, I would imagine like the condom is more like on the bedside, like one of like a. No, a, he then went to the know. bathroom and came out with no, a condom on. No, that's what I'm saying. Like that's cr- that's a crazy move. Like in that, if that's the least believable part of the story to me. <laughs> she said he's about seven inches thick and cut. Great. Jewish. That's a great review, by Jewish. the way. Jewish. 
Yeah, no, but I'm just saying, like, if anyone ever publicly described me as seven inches and thick, I'm Which, taking it. I'm taking it, bro. That is not what Jenna described. <laughs> no, you did not. I don't, thank God. Thank God um, it wasn't necessarily described. Wow, Drake is a victim of genital mutilation. You mm-hmm. hate to see it. Yeah. They fucked for about 20 minutes. He mostly hit it from the back and eventually <laughs> came inside the condom. Leo style. <laughs> very, like, uh, yeah. Very just, like, straightforward I like description that. of the sex. So he just... And is that, like, well, let's... Real quick. You're a celebrity. Oh, feel free to interject. If you're a celebrity, you have to wear condoms. That blows. That sucks. The worst that really part, that's, that is the burden of fame. Yeah. The number one burden of fame, I would say. I'm actually surprised that, like, if this was real, like, don't you think that Drake would have had, like, some forms signed? Oh, like an NDA. Kobe, yeah. Kobe shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you would think. Um, I, well, also, by the way, you don't think this story is true. No, I think it's all cap. Okay. But I think I, I want to be. believe it. And also, <laughs> I think that this story only would have caught momentum if it was about Drake. If it was about anybody else, this shit would not have fucking mattered because it's, with Drake, it's like there's an iota of believability Right, because he's a certified lover boy himself. Which we haven't even got to the fucking right. part but, that she But I will say puss. that what an amazing, like, efficient way to smash where it's like, okay, uh, 20, what is it, how much minutes? 20 minutes. How much, no, how much foreplay? They didn't, they didn't put a number on it. He rubbed and sucked her titties right. for a bit. So you rub and suck on the titty balls, then you fucking flip her over and you just hit it from the back for 20 minutes and then call it a day. Well, you rub and suck the titties, then you go to the bathroom. Oh, right, right. Strap up. <laughs> Waddle back in, fucking deck, dick hitting the thighs, or the latex hitting the thighs. Dick on hard. Dick on hard. <laughs> porked up. Bend her over. Mostly, mostly hit from the back. Okay. Oh, that's nice that he kind of switched it up a little bit, but I, you got to respect a man who knows what he likes. Immediately after, he went back into the bathroom to dispose of it. That's some gentleman shit. You don't just fucking snap it off and throw it in the general direction of the bathroom. Right. Also, by the way, flush it, dog, which we are about to find out he did not do. You got to flush it. Bad for the environment. Oh, come on. You think that you know, at Drake that cares point? about the sea turtles? I don't that, Is that what it, it's it's uh flushed condoms that are killing sea turtles? You think there's a sea turtle that has eaten Drake's cum that has like a fucking <sighs> CLB in his belly? I don't know, but it, I don't know how uh tur- sea turtles do with uh, spicy food. Well, <laughs> a little spoiler alert. Immediately after he went back to the bathroom to dispose of the jizzed in condom. Mm-hmm. She fished the condom out of the trash. Untied it, which nice. is hilarious that he tied it off. Yeah. Versus just flushing it. Why not just like let it fucking just throw it in the trash? Like why like tie it off like a well, fucking balloon? Like, like a well, balloon animal. No, I think because like you're better safe than sorry. You know, fucking close close the door on that condom. But I'm saying if you just let it in the bathroom or let it in the trash, like everything drips out. Now it's oh, contained. Like, like him holding it from the fucking reservoir tip and letting it. He basically it. made a fucking like a like a a balloon animal. Like a succulent ecosystem. Right, right. You know? Right. Okay. Like a biodome. Yeah, yeah, He yeah. made a biodome of his mm-hmm. own jism. <laughs> Is that the episode title? I don't know. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, oh. She fished the condom out of the trash, untied it, and put the opening end into her vagina. Vagina's the A is start out, the first A is start out. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Boy, was she in for a surprise. Misspelled. <laughs> she said it felt like pouring hot lava into her pussy. Pussy start out. <laughs> This is like, yo, this is like, uh, fuck, this reads like a great, like, screenplay. Yeah. Some Zola she, shit. Yeah, yeah. She screamed, and Drake ran into the bathroom. He admitted that he poured a packet of hot sauce in the condom to kill the sperm. Thoughtful guy, by the way, who's fucking running into the bathroom when his, uh, you know, lady of the night friend is yeah, having a moment. Probably still naked. Now his dick's on soft. Yeah. <laughs> dick on flop, dude. Yeah. Speaking of sea turtles, it's turtle back in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Dick Drake is just flopping and mopping into the bathroom. He admitted that he poured a jack a packet of hot sauce in the condom to kill the sperm. Now the Instagram is threatening to sue Drake. Damn. You it, hate to fucking see. I it. really don't think. Well, one, she. You is, think this is real? I, listen, I don't think it's real. I, of course, we want it to be real. I think that there's got to be some kernel of truth in here, right? Like my thing is like, what would compel anybody to send this blind item in? The IG model is so greedy that she got fucking thick cut seven and then went back for more to try to get impregnated. Like, how yeah, greedy can you be? Oh, come on. I would fucking try to get impregnated with Drake's cum. With a butt baby? Yeah. You're gonna my pour, pussy. You pour a fucking sauced up condom into your pussy? Yeah, I'm an Arnold Schwarzenegger Jr. his ass. Also, right, just pouring it like cream. Well, giving yourself a cream pie, by hot the way, sauce or not. That's not even a cream pie. So the... the well, when I read the headline, Instagram model ready to sue after Drake allegedly put hot sauce in condom, I thought that he had put the hot sauce. I thought it was like a kink. Yeah, yeah. We don't kink shame. For his own p- 
pleasure. We link shame. We don't kink shame. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was like to get like extra tingle on the balls or yeah. on the on the shaft, which is like that was fucking <laughs> crazy. You don't put your condom. You don't put your balls in a condom, by the way. <laughs> you, that's how do you know that Jim has never used a condom in his adult life? Or what am I gonna stuff my balls in here? <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> yeah. Damn, dude. <laughs> I'm a, yeah. You can hire me for children's parties to do balloon animals. Um, okay. Being men of science mm-hmm. and reporters, investigative we're, journalists. We're a capital J journos. This is how I want to fucking pee with you, bro. Immediately text <laughs> on the group text, does James snore? No. Which has two <laughs> doctors on it. Okay. Um, two female doctors. Oh, perfect. Representation. Both white. I said, can a woman get pregnant if she takes a used condom and oozes the spooge into her, or does the nut need to be blasted up there? Right. Because I had always thought that like the reason why you like shoot ropes right is to get it up it's, Dar- the fucking it's, it's darwinian dude. into the yeah. cervix and the ovaries and not just like chilling in the fucking puss evolution has made it so that roping has a true function yeah like lasso tossers like yeah they're the daddies <laughs> um what so so she's like like i'm gonna say she's like reverse engineering like kind of a cream pie into yeah. herself kind of but I do think but that, that just, you're saying that wouldn't get you pregnant. I think that bagging it up and making like a like a on Great British Baking Show like a fucking icing like piping <laughs> yeah, bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think <laughs> that's enough. Right. I think you need to Elon Musk SpaceX that shit. She up needs there. To, this is where the turkey baster comes in. Exactly. Got it. Got so got it. my doctor friend says I feel like I need more context, so I send her the <laughs> Instagram post. Wait, what was without context? You, oh, what you just said. Can yeah. you? Okay. Uh, she. I was like, this doesn't pertain to me. Yeah. Um, Good qualification. I said, please read the full caption. So. Uh, technically, yes, sperm can survive for about five days. That's a long time. I'm surprised to time. hear that. They're just Yo, chilling. Think, if you like came on the table here, like they're just like guys like swimming on the table for five days, apparently from like now until when it's Tuesday. We're on vacation, and those dudes are just hanging out. That's wild. Yeah, I think they get like that's got to be an extreme though. I would say that can't be on average. Do you think by the fifth day the sperm is all like fucking like wrinkly and old and like, maybe you don't want that to be the guy right, that like, be the one gets that the egg, well I right? think speaking of evolution it's the fastest swimmer is what is going to get to the egg and hopefully not give you a fucked up baby. But who knows? I'm not a doctor. <laughs> um okay so getting pregnant by oozing the spooge into her as I put it. So bad strategy. Statistically highly unlikely. Mm. So I'm, A for effort. I'm on an Instagram cleanse, so can't open that. So I sent her a screenshot of the of the um, caption. So I said, so it can just enter the vaginal opening and eventually swim to the ovary. See, I know my fucking yeah. sex ed terms. Maybe she's a super soaker, so she had fucking all, you know, maybe she was like, listen, just get him past the, th- just get one swimmer past the threshold and we're going to be Gucci. Yeah. You know, we don't know. All it takes is one. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, shoot or shoot. Comers come. Theoretically, yes, but again, statistically very unlikely, and I would say works way better up there near the cervix, not just quote unquote poured into the opening. However, more importantly, I'm not aware of any studies looking at what hot sauce does to sperm. Mm-hmm. And I would agree with Drake here that it probably isn't good for their long term survival and swimming abilities. So I don't know where Drake got this fucking information yeah. to squirt the Texas Pete. That's on the, like on girls the can't get pregnant if they're on top type beat. Or if they're in a swimming pool. Yeah, right. Because the chlorine kills the sperm. Or there's also the opposite of that, which is like in the hot tub, the boys can survive. No, they die. Well, I, what, was, what I'm saying isn't the isn't like one of these old wives' tales or urban legends that like she went into she went into a hot tub after uh, a jacking off had occurred and got pregnant by like a phantom sperm. Damn, that's another one. But that's, that's I'm up. saying that's up there with the childish thinking that is. Let me spray a packet of hot sauce in my used condom. But the doctor's saying that Drake's right to put Texas Pete on the ski. So he carries. So in this hypothetical scenario, if we believe this to be real, Drake has condoms on deck, like in his wallet, along with he's got packets hot sauce of hot sauce. Yeah. yeah, him and Beyonce and Hillary Clinton. <laughs> if this IG model really wanted to have Drake's kid, she really should have used a turkey baster. Or not been such a thirsty ass bitch. Damn, this doctor was harsh. She didn't, she didn't say that. But again, very greedy behavior. Be happy with the story. You don't need to now fucking take the kid home with you. Wouldn't you know? She asked, wouldn't you notice there's hot sauce mixed in there? Which again, I th- also, she also thought yeah. that there was hot sauce with his penis in there. If, if you and I were to mix up a bowl right now of human male semen. And hot sauce, it would be orange, be like a like a chipotle crema, and and uh, yeah, and even like yeah, chipotle mayo, <laughs> and like a condom for the most part translucent. The fact that she she was too, and she's spending all this time untying this balloon. I feel like 
dumb bitch type scenario. Well, I was here. like, yo, what if it's one of those color condoms, which are like, those are like the cheapest. Come okay. on, bro. It's like. You know, uh, Drake has the Tesla of condoms. It's condoms condom. they make in like yeah. Scandinavia. You buy them in the bathroom in a fucking bar. No, no, no. Going, going, going from um, luxurious levels down to like. Okay. It's condoms you buy in like Scandinavia. It's these Japanese condoms that apparently have like crazy thin latex. Again, not familiar. Then it is like your Trojans, whatever, Durexes, whatever. Yep. Then it is the free New York City subway condoms. Right. Or like, yeah, exactly. Then what you get the on ones, college campus. Then it's the ones you get that are passed out for free by like, I don't know. Um, Isaac likes. Exactly. <laughs> that are like that are like colored. And there's red ones. And I've had a red one on. <laughs> and it's like it's like more pink when like your yeah, once it's stretched when your out. beige meat is in there yeah, or pink meat <laughs> yeah sure um, any meat <laughs> it's like the chicken nugget meat <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, yeah, that, it, that, it really is that it really pink is. meat dude um, anyway so final verdict on whether or not this model has a case she goes I think her vag will be totally fine so it seems like a hard case to win yeah absolutely again no legal standing what hot sauce would you say that Drake used. Oh, well, do you want to? Oh, do you want to also read all of your puns? No, hot sauce puns from Twitter. Did you do that? Um, <laughs> what was the? What's the abobo one? Use the adobo to avoid the abobo. Okay. Uh, use the adobo to avoid the abobo. Nice. Which that was the first one that came to. Abortion. So that's the best one. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I can't believe that people. You're saying that people didn't know what an abobo is. Yeah. Well, those people have clearly not gotten abortions. Yeah. And you're missing um, out. Being obsessed with Houston, I think you would go with Texas Pete. Also, it's the most liquidy. Like it comes and it He's comes out. In base, God, awesome. It comes out in like spurts. Like you think Tabasco, right? Yeah. Well, that's my thing. When I think of like you know, I, listen, I like a lot. I've tried a lot of hot sauces in my life. You don't um, think it's truff? <laughs> that would actually be honestly. If I'm Drake, I'm using the Tesla of condoms and I'm doing a dollop of truff in that bitch, dude. Yeah, I need my fucking boys to smell like truffle oil. I would say Tabasco to me because of. Not that it's the spiciest, right? But that vinegary harshness. I feel like if I want to kill a sperm and the only weapon at my disposal is hot sauce, I'm reaching for Tabasco. The Tabasco, though. And I know it comes in packets. That's true. So does Texas Pizza. Or they have, you know, the little ones. You ever seen like the little cute ones? You ever go to yeah. a fancy brunch place like one of those? You're coming home with me. But um, with Tabasco, it only comes out Smart, like one Smart, drop Smart. at a time. Yeah, and how Texas Pete is like a true fucking drip. Okay, how fat do you think his loads are? How fat do you huge. think the Six Gods loads are? Oh, he's huge. huge. You know, you see him working out with the ropes? Oh, dude, there you go. My man's roped up. <laughs> yeah, I think you put Texas Pete on the skeet. My whole thing is like, how greedy can you be? Enjoy your As night. woman? In, yeah, enjoy your night in fucking paradise with what the certified lover think? boy. Don't fucking try to take it a step further and, and entrap this man like his fucking no, baby mama did. I disagree. Fucking get your money. Nah. What's her name? The baby mama's name? Adonis Sophie. Is... Sophie French porn star. Was she a porn star? She's or was done... she like a nude model? I don't know. For headlines, porn star sounds better. But sex I worker. Think sex worker. I don't think she was even that, dude. Well, porn star is sex Model. Workers. Nude model? That's sex work. Her, have you seen her art? No. It is. is. She on only, is she like, was she like on OnlyFans? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think they met on the greatest Instagram, excuse me, the greatest dating app in the world, Instagram. I already fucking spoiled it there. Um, no, but she's, uh, her thing is she's an artist, but her art is oh, dog yeah. shit. Yeah. Not that I'm an art critic, but like I know bad shit when I see it. That does, is he bad. Have, does he have her art in the embassy? I hope not. No, next he's to, next to the cause dolls. Next to Murakami. I mean, she, I wonder if her, she probably has like a pretty good market of collectors, mainly because she got knocked up by like Big Drake, Drake Simps. I mean, yo, if I'm Drake, drive up the prices. You know, maybe that's less alimony you have to pay. Or not um, alimony, child support. Wait, so you're you're chastising this IG model for trying to become Drake's baby mama? Bro, are you kidding me? Yeah, like, that's the fucking greedy. gold. That's the golden ticket. I'm telling you, one night in paradise should be enough for these hoes. Shout out my fucking That's boys. Sexist. That is Shout sexist. Shout out my, my OVO boys, dude, my brethren. That is fucking sexist. I think these women... You want Drake to have a fucking another kid that he's supposed to be responsible for? Yeah, and then I want the beef to, with Pusha T to ratchet up again. Also, think about how much Adonis and like the baby mom and drama is probably... How much material that's given Drake. I don't know if Adonis... Listen, I know Adonis pretty well. I don't know if he's ready to be a big brother. Big half-brother. Big half-brother. All I'm saying is you can't expect these... You, th you think these women should be happy with like seven in 20 minutes of 7-inch... Paradise yes, sounds like incredible. Those are and honestly, dude, those are great stats. Objectively, <laughs> they're fine. Twenty minutes, twenty minutes, seven inches thick. Let's go, dude. Titty Happy sucking. New Year, dude. Get your titties sucked <laughs> and rubbed <laughs> and ru and rubbed. Yeah. God damn. Speaking of rubbing titties, mm -hmm. 
there's <laughs> a new con or just yay yeah. uh, documentary, a trilogy hit Netflix in <laughs> February. This from speaking of rubbing titties, it's near Valentine's Day. Okay. <laughs> the most have... titty rubbing is day of the year. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a it's a holiday. It's a titty rubbing holiday. Exactly. There's no. I don't need a transition. I can do whatever <laughs> I want. This is my fucking podcast. Okay, dude. The Kanye documentary uh, directed by Coochie and Child. Right? What are their names? <laughs> no, Cootie. Like yeah. Kid Cudi, but Cootie. Like oh, Cooties. Yes, C O O D I E, and then the other guy. I okay. don't know. Maybe he has a less stupid fucking name, so it's hard to remember. Cootie and Coochie yeah. have the Connie Doc coming out. Gene Yuz. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> This is oh by the way I thought that, I thought it was a joke when I saw that. Oh, 100%. I think they're calling this cuz it's going to be it's a three-part event, I believe is how it's being marketed and I believe the first part is even going to be in theaters. Yeah. And it's going to be ro- rolling out over Netflix last dance style over 3 weeks. Um Yeah, I want some kid to do a backflip in uh the theater like they did oh, with yeah. No Way Home. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's incredible. Um when he dropped through the wire, oh, backflip. Are you excited for this? No. Like, no, <laughs> why? Be, uh, because you're on your Kanye hater shit or No, 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 no. I just it's it's not going to be to me like early Kanye is not like inter- that interesting to me. Right. To me Kanye gets interesting around Yeezus. Oh, I was going to say I'm kind of with you, but for me it's around graduation. Okay. The backpack stuff, honestly, for me, take it or leave it. You know, uh, him hanging out with you know fucking oh, so all that, Black all that Star fo- and Rhyme Fest. I don't give a fuck. And about all that, that footage, like you know, there's definitely going to be like new footage. But I feel like there's been enough of that footage floating around where you've seen it all, and you're kind of like you know the story. Mm-hmm. You know, fucking you know through the wire. You know, like um, you know, Blueprint album, whatever, whatever. Right. You know, uh, so you're saying this story has been told already at nauseum? It hasn't been t- like this. Is this will be the first time I think where it has been authoritatively compiled in one place mm-hmm. with the blessing of Ye. But if you have been following the story or paying attention, this has already been this is like pre social media, effectively. Right. I mean, this was when when was Kanye on Twitter? <laughs> I don't know, probably whatever. But like th- all this footage is probably like mostly on YouTube. Uh, Cootie and the other guy, they were his in-house documentarians from 03 to 05. Right. And then probably, like, had retained access mm-hmm. up until... Limited, like, in and whatever. out, but not the full-timers, but th- yeah. not as fucking, you know, uh, the kid from the future, Nico. Right, exactly. Um, and to me, like, yeah, like, the most interesting yay is from, like, Yeezus till now. Right. With, like, a few fucking rough spots and, you know, right around 2016, <laughs> 2020. Yeah, not to tear down two black creatives, but, like... Uh, and shout out to these guys because here's the thing, right? They fucking toiled with this man for God knows how long. I know we named like the years there, but yes, this popping in and out and like getting this access. Like, I'm happy that they got paid probably millions of dollars for this footage. Cooney, Cooney, sorry, Cootie and Chike. <laughs> Chike? What do you call me? No. Um, with that said, so big ups to them on, on fucking getting broken off and getting that bag. Uh, I watched a little teaser with these guys basically trying to sell you know, viewers on, like, why this is special and what the relationship was to Kanye. And I left that teaser being like, these dudes seem like bozos. Really? Like, they're not qualified to direct a documentary uh, that is this monumental. So I feel like it's going to absolutely 1,000% disappoint. Also, you don't want the authorized Kanye doc. You want the unauthorized Kanye right, documentary. Of yeah. Which is all the footage that he doesn't, want out in the world which probably you know yeah. who knows like he might be cool with fucking everything but like the one I, the I talk, laptop that his cousin stole that he was fucking bitches on type shit exactly the fucking so the one time that he in, that he visited Def Jam HQ I was on a flight out to LA and I missed it but it was a two hour and it was Pete Kanye rant it was MAGA yay and oh wow which will not be in the dock unfortunately will not be in the dock it was being filmed though that's by, the thing. But, but by his in-house By people. Nico. Because he has people now, mainly Nico, and I'm sure there's other video. Gabe, and before Nico was Gabe. Yeah. With the, used to be with the three. I don't know if it still is. That dude who's oh, like... Oh, he uh, back? Yeah. <laughs> um, he, I don't know if he, he changed it up. Um, but like, he has people filming him 24-7. What is that footage going to be used for? I would actually argue this, if anything, is feels more like unauthorized versus I want... The whole thing, I want to do not three parts. I want to do the fucking 69 part where we get fucking everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but that's not what this is going to be. At least that's what it seems And like, the right? title tells you everything that you need to know. Genius. Like, Genius. what? <laughs> what are you even thinking? How is that even approved? It's probably because it could use Netflix paid millions of dollars to then have this thing called Genius. It's probably because it can't use his name in the title. They're fucking using his name and likeness to promote the whole thing. So I don't know what you're talking about. 
I mean, maybe they have ownership of that footage, but I don't think they. Wait, could is put, this like, actually authorized? This I think is unauthorized. Like, for example, I don't think Kanye has been involved in any of the marketing, and probably is not going to be promoting this when he gets out. Probably mainly because he's not getting broken off, but. I'm almost positive that the access at the time was authorized. So they like own that footage and like legally Ye can't stop it from coming out. But this is not like endorsed by him and his estate. 267 hours of footage, right? Which so also is not that much. It's not that much. That's the other thing too. Like it is, we're talking about a, like three years of access, which is sick uh, to, ha- to be hanging out with Ye when he's coming up. But this is not that robust. It's a whole history lesson of music. Um, the highlights are like Through the Wire. So they directed the Through the Wire right, music video. Right, exactly. Um, uh, as well as their impressions of the future superstar then and now. Wait, so is it about... Is it, is it is the movie on them? No, I think that means like maybe there's going to be moments where they're like... They're the talking, talking heads. heads. Honestly, dude, of course we're going to watch this. Of course we're going to talk about it on the podcast. And I hope everyone... You know, at home listening does you know tap in as well, but this is gonna be bad, bro. Yeah, I don't think expectations that high, which is totally fine. The expectations are high Mm -hmm. around Julia Fox's (laughs) that is that dumper, that pristine dumper, that fucking crapper. Yeah, that has uh, torn (laughs) Kanye's mental asunder. (laughs) Has it? I don't know. So okay, so Kanye, Julia Fox, whatever the the photo shoot, the fake photo shoot, Carbone happened where everybody. Everybody was hushed and looking yeah. and being like, "What's going on?" And in the f- actual video footage, yeah. what the fuck is this bitch doing? Is, like eating their spicy. And also, Tony? like this whole thing of like her being the face of Diesel for Fall Winter Twenty and all the clothes I- in that magical Cinderella fucking suite, being Diesel and her wearing Diesel next to him and getting paparazzi everywhere. Like, is Diesel paying Kanye? Like, how is Diesel? Where- where- I want to know. Like, following the money there. Like, what is? How is Diesel? <laughs> Diesel sucks. Like, well, what, how is that happening? People love, or, you know, fashion people love the new fucking... She was in Balenciaga in Miami. I get that. When, the, you know, that, that whole coming out moment, she was she was dripped out in Balenci. But now that it's like, the, like I don't know, maybe maybe Ye is happy that she's she's getting her own bag versus her being like a bloodsucker and having him pick up every tab. But, I mean... That makes no sense to me. Diesel's not cool. Diesel by Glenn Martins. Like, people are at least, like, fashion people are it's like... It's her and Evan Mock are, like, the face of Diesel. And it's like, okay, so, like, how is... Con- why is Kanye Well, this guy was the Y here? Project guy, right? Oh, um, I guess people like Y Project. Yeah, so it's they're like... They're trying, they're trying. They're trying. They're doing amazing sweaty. <laughs> um, yeah, what is there to talk about here? I guess, like... Well, we're going to talk about the... We're going to talk about asses. Well, okay, real quick. <laughs> quick qualm. Shout out Despot. What's funny to me is, like, Julia Fox has been around for a minute and has like all this press on her and has like done interesting and cool and a lot of different things yeah the most interesting woman in new york that have warranted um you know like profiles and interviews and whatever and then as soon as she gets connected to kanye and she becomes like more of a mainstream name Mm -hmm. little jimmy qualm here all the fucking media publications like who is julia fox read our sit down interview from 2017 or 2018 around uncut gems and it's like shut the fuck up like uh, it's just you know whenever somebody dies, mm-hmm. whenever it's like somebody's birthday and yeah. they resurface a fucking <laughs> or whenever gets somebody gets nominated yeah. for like a Grammy or an Oscar, they're like read our profile thing from eight months ago. What it's do like, what do writers love? They love it when celebrities dies, when celebrities die, when celebrities date Kanye, so they can resurface all their old work that nobody clicked on the first time around. Apparently, Pete Davidson's um, current dating streak or hot run is like making entertainment bloggers just fucking want to kill themselves. I'm sure, dude. Who fucking... I mean, I was going to say, who who cares? I mean, everyone cares. I think that the thing here for me... Did you see Pete Davidson's big jeans? Is this like the fucking... Oh, yeah, that's... Terrible, yeah. Him leaving, leaving Nobu. What I would no, say, but then it, like GQ was like, oh, like Pete Davidson ushers in the era of big denim. Yeah, it's like, shut up. Um, yeah, it's called fucking polar big boys. Ever fucking done a kickflip in your life? Anyway, we were talking about the downside with Drake being a celebrity where he has to use condoms. For me, this is like the other side of the coin. Not to fucking pit these two fucking friends, frenemies against each other, but here's the benefits of being a celebrity. Kanye's job right now is fucking Julia Fox. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. That's like, we're o- only in a fucking America, baby. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. What a job. Would you Damn. say... What do you think his estimated taxes are like on just fucking Julia bro, Fox? Bro, I... Who knows, dude? Maybe Diesel's picking up a little bit of tap, <laughs> like I'm saying. All right, here's my question that for you. Diesel. Kim Kardashian, his ex, right, has the most famous ass in the world. Yeah. Uh, I think Julia Fox is up there with some of the best asses. I'm sure everyone saw it in Uncut Gems. I don't know what kind of CGI after effects were maybe fucking put on that, but for the most part... 
I would say that's a 10 out of 10 dumper. With that said, Ooh. is it better than Kim's? Because bigger is not always better. And Ooh. I would throw that to you, his a dumper is, fanatic. This pod's getting a little blue. This is a sexual pod for getting, sexual people. This pod's getting a little brown. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have always contended that Kim Kardashian and Kourtney Kardashian's asses are too big. Kourtney. How? Sorry, Chloe. Chloe. Who's trying to look like Kim who can't pull it off. How could one... And, like, sure, I guess in, like, the perfect lighting, in, in controlled lighting and a controlled set, like, she can, like, it looks great, just, like, general shape. But then in, like, general paparazzi photos where she's not, like, wearing something that, like, accentuates or mm-hmm. uh, mutes or whatever, like, certain parts or shapes or whatever, I'm just like, how do you physically wipe your ass? Okay. Like, honestly, the answer is probably Japanese toilet. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, um, it's a centaur situation. But there's no way that yeah. she can, like, it's, t- like, relative to the ass, she has T-Rex arms, so there's no way that you can, like get around cheek to get in there and particularly hit every nook and cranny. Yeah, are you also then from there extrapolating like that's too much ass to handle in the bedroom unless you're fucking strapped up like presumably Pete Davidson is? Um, Have you ever seen Kanye's dick? You ever look at his dick pics that leaked? That people I think are almost, so. Yeah, he's, Kanye's, I don't, I mean, listen, could I, is it bigger than Drake's thick seven? Maybe, it might be. Kanye might have a bigger dick. That might be where all the beef comes from. Yeah. Who has a bigger, bigger cock. Probably. He's a third Red Wing boot on his yeah. dick. <laughs> yeah, uh, for real. Okay, but it's okay. Obviously, BBL. But what people are now seeing is that Kim has had her BBL implants removed. Interesting. Because now the aesthetics are swinging mm, back towards more Kendall Jenner. Instead of like, no, not even more like, yeah, more Kendall. Sorry, I can't keep him straight. I was thought you were saying Kylie. But well, like, Kylie has BBL. Had BBL. Yeah, done but instead for of sure. like a giant ass. Yeah. Right. At least she's had ass reduction. Um, it's more like implants removed and then probably like reshaped. To make it more mm. of like a, a tight, still large and still oh, I mean, robust and rotund. It's her brand, right? So, but she not. Has to have it. People are just like, yo, if you look in like recent photos, you can ch- you can see that her ass has been like. So it's kind of like there's a moment right now, a line being drawn in the ass sand, an yes. ass crack, if you mm-hmm. will. <laughs> yeah. Of like, what is the new booty that is put on a pedestal by like rich white women? You know, who are they gonna who are they gonna uh, culture vulture their asses from next? So, title of the episode: Drawing an ass crack in the sand. Why don't you put that down, and then let me then throw to you my next question. So, obviously, in terms of like who's winning the breakup and who's fucking got a bigger dick, whatever. Here's my question, my next question for you, right? Obviously, when you're dating or you're married to, when you start a family with Kim Kardashian, you're with the girl boss of all girl bosses. But pulling all of that aside, all of the billions of dollars, just comparing. Kim Kardashian to Julia Fox. Who, in your estimation, has the better dumper? Probably Julia Fox. Damn. Um, okay. Right? Because it's definitely natural because, like, I've been a longtime follower. A fan. First time <laughs> caller. <ass> kisser. <laughs> For, of, first time um, tapper. <laughs> where, because I found her through uh, Salem. She was dating. Oh, you not love the, Salem. Not the Walter Pierce lookalike, Jack Donahue, but the other oh, guy, right. John, I forget, the skinny motherfucker who's been in, in and out of jail. Yeah. She was dating him. And I found her through him, and so it was like I was like, "Damn, she has bad taste in guys." God hot. damn. Yeah. Well, why was he in jail? Uh, he's never really disclosed, but I think like some like B and E, probably some like you know, really. Like that. They're fucking. They're not like Midwest guess, trash. They're not bro. like rich, right? They're kind of. They're famous to guys. They're like, like good. You. Yeah. They're like good. They're like good. Like they're not like struggling, but I think like the uh the one dude in the one times interview that um came out around the last album, which was fire. He was like, "Yeah, I'm. I've been working construction." Probably to like give him some like structure and like sure. keep him out of trouble, but <laughs> he's a grown man, dude. But so like Julia Fox, like she's given mad interviews. She's been around, obviously done very interesting, cool things. Which the Kanye Julie Fox session, it is like a cool little like artsy fartsy fucking whatever. That's what yeah. Now that Ye's on his fucking you know Demna, it's not like his dime shit. square shit, and that's. Like, and that's what I actually appreciate here, whereas, like, Kim almost, like, downgraded to, like, a, the face of blowing razors, right? Like, a guy <laughs> who sits fucking courtside. Well, bro, she just got sued for uh, pushing a fake Ethereum pyramid scheme. Oh, really? Her and, like, Floyd Mayweather, basically fucking Kanye's entourage. Oh, yeah, all the fucking losers he's surrounding himself with. But, but Julia Fox is, so, sorry. So but she, I was saying that for Kanye, it's, uh, that the Julia Fox, it, it was, un, the, the, the relationship itself, and we don't need to fucking go super deep in this, because everyone's kind of already talked about this ad nauseum, but, like, uh, for me, that's, like, surprising, because he was like, I'm going to go, like, hyper-specific, cool New York chick, and yeah, I appreciate that. But also that. with a gigantic, perfect Oh, booty. of course. But so she... And, like, she just seems seemingly so much more interesting to me than Kim Kardashian. So, like, 
she, uh, similar to Lee McSweeney's story, right? Mm-hmm. Where she like grew up in New York, was kind of like a party girl, um, you know, drugs. She was a dominatrix. Yep. I think she got like kidnapped, kidnapped, right, or something. Yeah, I think I don't want to. She's done. She's she's an artist. She's a dominatrix. Yeah, she's a fucking downtown intellectual. All that shit. Exactly. Um, Respect. Yeah. So who has a better shitter? My opinion, it's got to be Julia. So. In terms of you even being with Kim, even with Kim pivoting back to fucking more like a, like a tighter ass, a svelter booty. Um, so despite you uh, being a big time Kanye hater, are is Kanye like is he? Well, I mean, you obviously you know everyone listened to the Critics Choice Awards and the Fitties, and you know I was vindicated to some degree in my appreciation. I'll not say love, but how much I like Donda. <laughs> are you? You think Kanye is on the right track? In terms of what? Everything passes. <laughs> no, the brand of yay. Is he going? Is he trending in the right direction going into twenty twenty two? He's always doing shit that is like, uh, oh, like he's fucking wearing, you know, Balenciaga head to toe versus like the MAGA hat. Yeah, like, that's I appreciate true. That. Well, that's, a, like, that's an obvious improvement. But. At least he's like shutting the fuck up and like focusing more on like the music and the and the aesthetics versus like. Is he focusing more on the music? I mean, doing this, doing going into the studio with the game is not like LA like confidential. That's like not cool <laughs> to me. What's their um. What's the the dreams? What is it? Dreams that collab that they had on his first record. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, Him. Jimmy had a dream. Larry had a dream. Pusha T, Rocky, Moneybag Yo posted a fucking screenshot of. Like, oh, I think the game song is with Game Kanye and Moneybag Yo. Maybe okay. it'll, maybe it'll be a banger. <laughs> the game was a uh, yo. The game's got a fat ass. He was a stripper. The game has a huge dick too. Really, he's like famous for having a fucking pipe. I'm trying to think. He's been like linked to. He's like those guys, you know, like a uh, certain rapper dudes. Like I'm trying to think of another example. Maybe like a Dave East type guy. But like they, they get like they fluff themselves up and they take like a picture and they post like a thirst trap. I think the game has a huge cock. Okay, but I don't know. We need the audience at home to fucking yeah do, put do that on research. That into <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah. He's been fucking dropping it on every recording session, and you're like, yo, this is peak divorce dad. Yeah, he's got. He's like he's hanging with the boys. Yeah, no, and so I kind of like he's that. hanging with. Anthony Br- or Antonio Brown. <laughs> I know. So yeah, going super gremlin with AB. Uh, but it's funny because I, I do appreciate that he's living his best single life. But what's weird to me is that he could surround himself with like cool, cutting edge people, much like Julia Fox. Like, I don't know, dude. Like, what did I say? Blade. He could be hanging out with fucking Blade and Yeet. But here he is. Is that really who you think? Like, if you're like, yo, yeah, like that, those are the cool guys that Ye's got to associate with. If I was creative directing, who should, he should absolutely be kicking it with fucking Yeet. He should hit the studio with Yeet and some, and some arc twizzy. Texas P. But, but uh, instead, I am kind of bummed out that outside of Julia Fox, he's like surrounding himself with like washed up losers. Like Madonna. <laughs> like Madonna, like fucking AB, who and is, like by the way, Floyd Mayweather. It's not cool. Kanye must die a little bit. Although, I don't know. Maybe he fucking loves it. He either dies or loves it a little bit every time A.B. comes up, uh, pulls up in a fucking fashion of a men's A.B. Fit. is his most swagless homie, clearly. Yeah, but, like, he's so handsome. He could fucking... He should be in Balenci head to toe. Ye should be styling these people that he's, you know, keeping around him versus letting them, like, embarrass him publicly in Delilah or wherever the fuck yeah, he's hanging out. He, it is such a bad look when he's like... Uh, him and AB are getting like the haircut by the same dude, and you have like Kanye in his fucking wash black hoodie. Yeah, and then <laughs> Antonio Brown is just fashion nova mess. So embarrassing, dude. It's bad. Yeah, it's real bad. come on, yay. You Put almost him in some have fucking it. Yeezy Gap engineered by Balenciaga, bro. Yeah, the fuck are you doing? So this is a new three way collaboration mm-hmm. that uh, dropping in June. Are you excited? The Kanye Demna affair continues. They're taking it from the bedroom to the boardroom. Yeah. Do you think they fucked? No, but the thing that's crazy to me is just like so many people dick ride Kanye almost to like a fault because then they end up being like paint by number fashion. Like, no, nah, man, I've worn fucking Red Wing 17 inch boots for years now. Ironically enough, Kanye is that kind of guy for them. He's a fucking dick rider. Is that bad? I and listen, if you're gonna dick around anyone, it might as well be like the fucking clown god prince of fucking fashion himself. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like you're Kanye. Kanye, like looking up, worshiping a, like a, a peer is weird to me. I get how he used to do where he would like absorb the talents of like younger people around him, but well, him like worshiping another guy, it's just off brand. But what about, when, what about when he like took on when like him his shit with like Ricardo Tishi? Where he kind of like was in Javenchi head to toe. 
Givenchy? What are yeah. you, fucking Cardi? No, exactly. I will say that there's been all these eras where Kanye has found a fashion designer that he, like, puts on, no pun intended, head to toe, and then, like, kind of on a pedestal. Tishi, like you said, during the Watch the Throne years. Margiela. God at one point. Margiela during Yeezus. So, like, I get that. Um, this, to me... Seems like so much more because now it's become this business venture. Maybe that's like what it maybe should have always been where he could like get paid and shift the culture, not just fucking wear something as a fashion plate. But the way that I perceive the relationship, I don't know. It just seems like Kanye admitting that there's somebody better and more talented than him in so not by he's never said that but in the way he's acting and to me it's almost like chipping away at the kind of you know kanye monolith it's it's weird to me really to me that's more admirable that he's like able well, to be like yo like i'm not demna you know whether whether you think demna is a fucking god or not like right put that aside but it is like yo i'm not this guy this guy can do what he's doing i can't do what he's doing hmm. let me fucking enter his orbit and fucking ride off the vapors of that has kanye ever kind of admit not admitted but he, you're just even in the way he acted that anyone was better than him at anything that's weird um, right? that's what I i'm mean, saying it's like i guess t- what he used to do is he would just poach talent from like celine and bring him into like the Yeezy yeah world. it was more of like a, a thanos thing where it's like absorbing people and like fucking st- not stealing, but you know, it, it would. It's different in my. I just view it as a different thing. The one thing that I will, and I'm not a Kanye hater. I'm just not fucking blind to fucking his uh, his missteps and mishaps like you are. I'm not blind at all. What do you think of Kanye in? Uh, what do you think of the red hat? It was terrible, bro. It was what do you embarrassing. Think of Donda? It's embarrassing. Him running for president is embarrassing. What do you think of Donda? I liked I thought Donya was a step in the right direction, which is why I was trying to get you what I'm trying to get you to admit to is that he's on the right path again. Not, Not saying it's a classic at all. Aesthetically, yes. Musically, no. Was it the best album in 2021? No. That but was you, Japanese breakfast. It was porches. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, so Yeezy Gap, engineered by Balenciaga, the three-way motherfucking collaboration of June 2022. More trash bags, gonna see it. I'm sure. Exactly. <laughs> trash bag jackets. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I will give Kanye unadulterated, uncut credit is when it comes to the world of fashion, and like, did I ever wear Yeezys? I only wore the Desert Rats. And the yeah, slots, the Rats were good. I had those too, yeah. Um, you know, I never wanted to dress like fucking, uh, you know, Timmy Chalamet and Dune back in like 2016 or Ian Connor and Mulligati. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Going sicko mode. But one of the things that he said um, that he kind of mentioned a few times when he was like in peak yay, Kanye, post Yeezus, getting into uh, Yeezy. Post or uh, peak mania. Peak mania. It was post Yeezus album when he was first concepting and then eventually did do the Yeezy mm-hmm. clothing line. Um, was he's like, yo, I want to democratize and redefine what luxury is sure. and like lower the, uh, increase the access, mm-hmm. right? And raise the standard. He's like, yo, when I'm driving down the street and I see a fucking woman wearing a big trench coat, I hate that. <laughs> when they're wearing a scarf, I hate that. Da da Like, I want to dress Kim, like my, me dressing Kim is like my love letter to the world mm-hmm. because I want to like f- give a standard that people should aspire to, but also raise the standard that people should be like uh, holding themselves to. Right when it comes to just aesthetics and redefining luxury with like price point, whatever, and accessibility, put that aside. With Ye, like, and just a few months after the first season of Yeezy came out, you, which was aesthetically very cool mm-hmm. and influential, like what we have now. And a departure, some of the, mo- some of the first OG blue collar outdoors kind of stolen valor, yeah, and like rework the silhouette and of that was common at the time or popular at the time, and was a departure from like the fucking. Last vestiges of like indie sleaze, you know, skinny jeans, yeah. fucking whatever, whatever. The shit that he proliferated with uh, Ricardo Tishi and exactly. Givenchy, to be honest. No, but even, even Backpack Ye was like in, on his fucking hips. Well, he was polo. That was, well, shutter shades are like such an indie sleaze staple, which obviously he might as well have invented, but yes. What continue. I will get, again, going back to my point, what I do want to give him credit for is kind of democratizing or raising the standard of like the aesthetic that people should aspire to be and like. Absolutely, and when H and M and them started ripping off Yeezy wholesale, mm-hmm. was that like an unintended but consequence? But like step in the right direction for him, where it is like okay, now you can get like a five dollars shirt that does like fit better, drop or shoulder, like a, a garment better, dyed, a better colorway yeah. or whatever, not just the fucking bright gaudy shit of like the uh, mid twenty tens or first half of the twenty tens. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think the prophecy that was a lot of words. The prophecy is almost complete in that what Kanye has done up until this point is he absolutely fucking 
you know, created, not created, because, you know, he didn't invent this aesthetic, but he democratized and popularized an aesthetic so that now, yes, hoodies are luxury. What he has not fucking accomplished yet, which maybe we're very close now with this engineer gap engineered by Balenciaga shit, he is maybe going to make good on the promise by not just fucking lowering, because you said raising the bar. I think he, like, lowered the bar of the aesthetics. We're like, more things are considered high fashion and cool that in the past would have been just considered streetwear, mainly like hoodies and fucking blue collar stone valor and all that fucking workwear and shit. But now he can fucking actually put out the clothes at a price point that is fucking accessible because even that Yeezy that even you can afford that that Ye- yes, thank you very much. Ha ha ha. Transition. I, by the way, uh, I was good on my taxes, dude. Right now, <laughs> financially speaking. You're the one who was holding the fucking bag. Oh, I'm fine, too. I just had to pay a lot all at once. Yes, a lot more did. than I was expecting. You did. But I guess, you know what? You're rich. So who gets Yeah, I can fuck, afford right? it. Anyway, I think Kanye with... Because uh, this shit with Gap right now, we have two trash bag jackets and a couple hoodies. Hopefully, by bringing in fucking Demna and his whole Balenciaga brain trust, they can build out that line and then honestly complete the loop on what Kanye has been talking about since he had that first fucking show bomb in Paris. There's an interview where he's like, yo, mark this interview five years from now. Like, it's going to be um, uh, democratizing luxury or raising the standard that people should hold themselves to. That's what I meant, raising well, the bar. Yeah, and also, it's easy to democratize luxury when you will a hoodie into becoming a luxury item yourself, right? And when you partner up with a massive um, production partner, such as Adidas or such as Gap. Yeah. And Lawrence, as much as I love to call you out on your bullshit mm-hmm. all the fucking time. <laughs> Someone's got to. In this instance, you put your money where your fucking giant mouth is. Yeah. And you bought the Yeezy Gap blue hoodie, you fucking simpleton. <laughs> I didn't necessarily want to go public with this, but uh, my- He's so much simp, you got iodine poisoning. But, but my, my friends who have the first iteration of that hoodie gave it pretty rave reviews, so I figured I would They sized of, up? Well, I got the- And that's the thing, too, like- I got the fucking size. I'm not one of these fucking dudes who's got his belly out because he didn't fucking size up on his drop shoulder Yeezy Gap hoodie. But yeah, I got the fucking good reviews. I got the fucking sizing intel. And I will say, and this is where the main point of you know contention is between you and I, you think the black hoodie is like the one. Based off the non heaven and hell. It? Okay. That's the more like Balenciaga. Um, I mean, everyone already has a black hoodie, so I do see the value in the blue hoodie. The blue mm-hmm. hoodie to me is like, it's a fucking gap. Hoodie, well, I bro. personally hate Balenciaga and hate the Balenciaga aesthetic. So by saying that this hoodie, hoodie A, is more Balenciaga-ish than hoodie B doesn't do anything for me. I just really like that cobalt blue. It pops. But this is a John that while I paid... Did you only buy this because it's, it's kind of his name attached to it? No, no. Because you can get this hoodie. No, can I be real? I'm not even capping at all. No kizzy on this one. It, it's the blue, dude. I want that cobalt blue pop in my wardrobe. Man, and, my fucking twizzy kizzy right now. And I will say, despite paying fucking $80 of my not hard-earned money for that hoodie, I will say this is something that is never going to make it on social media. You're never going to fucking see this on my stories. You're never going to see it on my fucking grid. Here's this- a $74 cobalt blue garment dyed 14-ounce hoodie. Okay, from what brand? LA Apparel. So you fucking sex trafficker. What, what am I? You fucking sex monster. I was gonna say, what am I supposed to fucking support Dove Charney? I'd rather support fucking Yay, dude. Exactly. <laughs> That's and you know what? Guess what? I guarantee you that hoodie fire because <laughs> yeah. LA Apparel is fucking sick. Um, but because you know, obviously we're fucking the crazy thing to me is that you're we like support un un unprovoked. I'm never, I'm never unprov- sh- unprovoked. You were like no. You're like, yeah, I bought the hoodie, and guess what? It's never gonna make defeat. I was like, I didn't ask you about Instagram, no, bro. Like, I didn't ask you about your fucking social media strategy when it comes to buying Johns. Okay. Do you only buy? And then it, it occurred to me, no. Do you only? Because you don't buy Johns, because you're broke. Do you only thirst after flow of Johns? Where in your fucking Terminator mind, you're like scanning through, like, will pop on feed, will pop on grid, <laughs> will amass four thousand likes? Is that how you truly 4, acquire Johns? Uh, four thousand on a good day for you. <laughs> <laughs> on a bad day. Um, well, no, it's not we've the, seen the numbers. It's not the it's not the only way I go about acquiring Johns, and we've talked about this a lot. But what I will say that was it's nice about this hoodie is to get something and to not even worry about that because it's so embarrassing having Kanye's name attached to it that so I could it, now just get a John and just appreciate it. Going to get a coffee, <laughs> going to buy a bottle of natural wine, you know. Coming over here to destroy your apartment. That's when, yeah, seriously. That, but that's when you get your wife featured on next week's pod to take all your picks, bro. Nah, sure. Well, in it, your mind, that's a wasted. That's a wasted. No. So you're saying I wasted eighty dollars then? 
because it's not. Oh, well, you're f- gonna waste it anyway. Yeah, for sure. Um, and uh, I don't know. It was kind of nice. Kahlua espresso martini. It was, it was kind of nice to to cop a John like a civilian, like a normie, or, like a civilian or a pedestrian who just wants to get something to just test it out. Come on, to test drive it, to have some fun with it, to see what the hype is all about. Hey, let's see what this Kanye guy's up to. How many Kanye Johns have you had in your life? Uh, no Johns at all. But uh, besides footwear, for sure. But no Johns besides the invites. That would be Johns. I have the. I have do, you, do you wear the anorak? No, I don't wear it. <laughs> like, I should sell it. You think it's worth any money? I looked at it recently because I have season three anorak. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I have like too. The vacuum seal. Yeah, yeah, pouch. I have that too. And then there was the no, okay. the long sleeve Rothko, um, season four or five camo long sleeve that they sent out as well as an invite but yeah i'm sure there's a bunch on grilled um but no i've owned my own desert rats and mud rats uh and i got free i got yeezys on flow from adidas but i i might have well i definitely sold the the easy was it a 350 the first one for sure yeah. fucking sent those off immediately that was frankie i think right well, he, i think he was he was, he was doing yeezy so he sent me a sweater which, oh really which i sold but I kind of regret selling it because it was like it was cool. It was just like a solid kind of wash black, similar to the what yeah. he's wearing now. The last um, Johns that he designed that I actually like thought were cool and I tried to buy, but I couldn't was the APC collab. I was trying to get like ugh. nah the jeans and the airport sweater and that ugh. shit was cool. Yo, I forgot about this. Everyone at Def Jam got a pair of um, Desert Rats. Those are cool. Everyone, sorry, everyone got a pair of Yeezys, and you kind of didn't know what you were gonna get. I got fucking these like not. Slime green, these like piss yellow desert rats that okay. I flipped immediately yeah. for like five hundred bucks. It was awesome. Those were those. Was that a 550? What was that? Five fifty. Yeah, those yeah. were good. I like. That not was like the, the piss, not the piss yellow ones. Uh, I had the white ones and I wore the white ones. And yeah. then when he started going mag, I put on my performative fucking allyship hat and I threw them in the trash. Yeah. Fished them out. I think are I they still here? I think I donated them. Yeah, those are. That's my favorite. Uh, There's a certain point where you can not sneaker, honestly. Like true, a skate shoe. looks like a skate shoe. The true cool. mark of adulthood is um, <laughs> being able to uh, behave yourself at a wedding with an open bar yeah. and not wearing any Kanye Johns. I mean... And we're clearly not there on both fronts. Well, listen, man. I'm not... I, I will do my best not to wear it around you. Um, hopefully, it's great. Hopefully, I fall in love with it. I, I want to see this man win. I want to see him democratize You're going to fucking... Good taste of Yo, you're going to convince yourself. You've already convinced yourself that you love if it. If there's one thing that... Throwing fits, the only podcast that matters, can agree with, with Kanye Omari West, now known as Ye, is that we want to democratize good taste as much as possible. Exactly. So, Which brings go. us to some entertainment talk. The best entertainment of 2022 so far. First up, Wordle. <laughs> Are we talking Wordle? No. Can we? Well, I figured out. I, I, know, I now know what it is. First up, Dick's Out. Quite literally for a show. I'm very excited it's back, Euphoria. Yeah, I don't watch it. I'm on my fucking perv shit. I will say, though, it's crazy. I didn't realize the whole season was filmed on film. You know how expensive oh, like that Co- is? Kodak, like, wait, the, not the whole season. I don't know. That's what I, I saw some fucking shit on Twitter, which is crazy to me. I saw, like, Kodak, like, reinstated some. They, like, reopened a factory. And, stock, and, yeah. And they, like, opened up. They started What you're saying is not the whole show. It might just been the, pi- the, or the, the premiere? I think, like, or just, like, some Certain shots scenes. within the show. Because uh, I, I what, and listen, not to get on my cinephile shit, but apparently uh, it is a beautifully shot show. So I respect that yes. from a technical aspect. Shut the fuck up. The lighting <laughs> and cinematography is fucking brazy. It is, there is, like, elements like surrealism, mm-hmm. avant-gardeness, um... It's very unsettling. Like I always felt very icky watching it. The, pl- the like a like a pervert, a little bit. I mean, you're watching like 17 year olds like fucking yeah, suck. Actually, 17. But the whole conceit is, and then but then also just very intense. Yeah. Right. And like what drugs? First, drugs and violence. Well, season one was more like I think like psychologically tense. Season two, there's been some fucking like action. Nice. Like. Drug deals gone awry. Mm, I like that. Um, That's cool. Maybe gritty, tap in. gritty origin do stories. I need to, do I need to watch season one or can I just go? Can I just start? Because that's my. It just feels. And the reason, and I know it's good, and I know it is right now. The show, the zeitgeist, is firmly fucking you know locked in. I don't want to have. I'd rather watch a movie than a whole. To go back and watch a whole season. Just of watch the show. season. I think just a season one recap. I mean, oh, you can. Yeah, HBO has that probably. There you go. No, just on YouTube. Oh, just okay. Like a ten minute recap. Oh, like a little one. sizzle reel. There's like a narrator that's like this, this, and then this. Like I would do that before every Game of Thrones season. It's Zendaya. She's the main one. Zendaya. Zendaya. Sydney Sweeney's. Yes. And then uh, who's the fake despot guy? Angus, Angus Cloud. Cloud. Who's in? Uh, well, North Hollywood. North Hollywood. Hmm. 
Um, and Hollywood. <laughs> and Hollywood. Yeah. And he Hollywood. has a little. Uh, he has a little brother character who's fucking awesome. Okay. He's famous. Like a, any other? But any other well-known faces? Well, I mean. they all got famous from Euphoria. Hunter Schaefer. She is trans. Oh, nice. Um, uh, Alexa Demi. Very attractive. <laughs> uh, who else? More than Sydney Sweeney's. More than Sydney Sweeney's. I'm more of an Alexa Demi guy than a fucking Sydney Sweeney guy. Damn. Dude. Even though the du- the duality of man. Yeah. I don't even know who that is, but I know she's not fucking packing sweater puppies like Sydney Sweeney. She's not. Um, Jacob Alote, which I know is like the Mexican corn dish, but I think that's his name. Alote. <laughs> he's like super hot. Um, he's dating the daughter of the Full House mom, the woman that went to jail. For putting for like cheating on the on the SATs or like the college. Oh right, 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 right. Sure, he's super fucking hot. Um, it's a whole fucking. It's a big cast. Is it a big recommend from you? I re- I think it's really good. I think it's unlike most things on TV in that it is like it's a show where I am not on my phone whatsoever. Really? Yeah. It's very intense. It's very like it's a zero on the snoozo meter. <laughs> it's a zero on the snoozo meter. Um, it's very like it put. It's very. It's pretty fucking edgy. Like okay. not as edgy as you when you say gay and retarded, but like it's pretty fucking. <laughs> edgy. I have never said those things ever. <laughs> In Next front up, of a paywall. <laughs> Next up, your fit. Wait, you like the show? Or you don't like the show? The hype house oh, TV ha- show. I hate this. I was gonna say your recommendations right now because it's not that you recommended this, but our boy Seth Rogen, our boy. <laughs> Seth Rogen tweeted about a guy it. we follow on yeah. Twitter, <laughs> a famous guy that we fuck with. He was tweeting about it, and you were like. And then Cara Monica wrote a whole fucking, you know, uh, interesting look into, like, the, not second act, because that implies, like, fall off, but, like, where these TikTok stars go, and, uh, I, I, you know, this show has big names on it. I was, so this is Hype House on, on it's Netflix. A con- it's a TikTok content house, and it's kind of like, yeah, it it's is a the, reality show. It's the Hype House. Yes, it's a reality show around, mm-hmm. like, the inner workings of, like, the fucking drama between, like, the major characters and minor yeah. characters. I don't know, I've only watched one and a half episodes. It's yeah, I hate it. You hate it. I watched Why? two epi- just- I watched two episodes in preparation for this podcast. Uh, nobody on this show is interesting or talented because they're not. Well, pff, oh, whereas the people in Winterhouse so talented. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, touche. But it's because uh, the age gap, I think, only amplifies that stuff for me because I'm watching people with their whole life ahead of them, and I'm so jealous because they're so attractive. Uh, but I'm not like and so rich. Yeah, and so and because it's like basically they're living inside of an MTV Cribs episode, right? Yeah. The the G wagon today or the Rolls Royce or yo, you know the G swagon, bro. Yeah. Mad anyway, G- yo, um, pull up the G wagon to the G wagon. I don't. And we were talking about Lil Huddy because we're trying to get WME to help us book him on the pod. Well, he's been of all the TikTok yes, yes. stars that are kind of chronicled in the Caramonica article. Chronicled in the Caramonica article. It sounds like an <laughs> Eminem bar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's an awfully hot coffee pot. <laughs> uh, Will Huddy has actually had like the most breakthrough success. So you have Addison Ray, who's trying to be a fucking actress, who has no fucking personality. That was what blew me away. Or not is she Addison, on it? Excuse me, not Addison Ray. Uh, Charlie D'Amelio. Yeah, well, she's seventeen and is is now like a fucking vacant husk of a human because she's been yeah, eaten from the inside out by the fucking social yeah. media t- toxicity. They had a Hulu show. It's it was touted as like the next like Kardashian. Was, fucking I franchise. never even watched it. I heard it sucked. There's one amazing moment though where her older sister, I don't know who's older or who's younger. I don't know anything. But the older sister just has a breakdown on camera, where she's like, like a whole meltdown. She's like sobbing, and she's like reading comments. She's, she's like, I was just getting home from the gym, and someone took a picture of me as I was you know sweaty and like in my gym clothes, and they said <laughs> I was dusty. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Sorry, musty. Hell yeah! I'm dude. not musty. Damn, dude. Respect with, with your musty. With your musty. Ass. Everyone on this show is uh, not interesting and extremely concerned with being canceled. Though you know who I do fuck with? I fuck with Gay Larry. Oh, Ray. Ray. Yeah, that's like yeah. I fuck with that. That I guy. That. that guy's funny. He's cool. Yeah. He's got a big personality. Oh, and then uh, speaking of fucking next level trans superstars, Nikita Dragon. Yes. I don't need all these fucking uninteresting, albeit beautiful. Ripped and gorgeous white people. I'm excited for the little hoodie thing. For the I, I'm his keep... music. So we listen to his music. music. Sucks. It is fucking dog shit. Well, it's not made for us. Fucking I'm gonna keep watching. More Hype like House. Taking Back Monday. Am I right? The shit is trash. I will keep you appraised of the developments because yo, we might have a sleep on our hands. I don't know. And then you were saying like, okay, we get little hoodie on the pod. Huge get. 
probably unlikely, but let's say we get him. You were like, yo, do we have to fucking go hard? This is the ASAP Bari paradox where it's like you have on someone that the audience hates or doesn't like. Is it our journalistic responsibility to fucking end a motherfucker's life who is nice enough to do the show? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, last bit of best entertainment of 2022. Okay. A little curveball here. Okay. Look at your brain can handle this. It's a word game. Wordle. Oh, yeah. I, my brain can't handle it. So t- you're thinking Squirtle because you're a Pokemon guy. No, not even that. It's just you like. You get up in that squissy. I knew it was a word game. I, Jenna fucking loves it. I know you love it. The cord is going fucking crazy, posting all of their fucking. What is it? Your score? What is that? What is it called when you post that thing? The grid. Uh, I just call it the grid. Okay, they're posting their grids. You see fucking... It's your, or I call it the, your journey. Right. That's what it is. Yeah, right, right. Your word, your word journey. And then you got all the motherfuckers... But it's spoiler free. Drop, right, exactly. Dropping it on the timeline. And like, Jenna, just this morning, uh, I watched her play, because I was like, all right, let me see how this goes down. She kind of explained the rules. I am such... An idiot. I, yeah, I was going to say, such a... a, a Moron. <laughs> retard. <laughs> Simpleton. No, my EQ is so high... That sometimes I forget my. Oh, I, I'm my, just thinking about the sit at the that one fucking framing in Le Samurai, dude. Fucking Alan Bichet. I'm all heart. I have no brain, no IQ. This to me is fucking homework. This is homework. It's a war game. You don't I do would, crossword puzzles. I would rather. Do you read books? I do not read <laughs> books. You no. can't read. No, I. I uh, I have some some good uh, uh, beach reads, well, pool reads that are coming with me to what, like uh, a fucking James Patterson flick. Like no, it's uh, it's the book a about Tom Clancy no, I have joint. The, I have the the new Hollywood book, um, something uh, something in Raging Bulls. What is it fucking called? I'm blanking. Right. Anyway, anyway, my point is this: I would rather look at some motherfucker's stupid fucking photo dump that is literally just Trojan horsing a fit pic on slide three than like. Play a game, if that's what you call it, of Wordle. Is this you trying to Trojan horse photo dumping and casual Instagram into the... Well, that's what I I was more interested in talking about that than Wordle. But Wordle, to me, is homework, so I'm not into it. You are into it. Some other people, some other fucking nerds are into it. I get it. I think it's a fun little way to start off your day, and I think that sharing it on Twitter is pointless. It's a fucking... That's embarrassing. Well, it's a brag, but it's not a brag because... like You can't even mute that. You can't mute a fucking grid. You could mute Wordle. Yeah, but is that... I said on the, on day two, I was like, yo, I love Wordle, muting Wordle, because I saw that people are starting to post it. When you like, share... What's the fucking point? When you share your journey, uh, does it say, like, from Wordle? So if I if I um, mute Wordle, I'll lose the grids? It's Wordle number of the game. It's like 208 Got or whatever. Okay, and then, so like, I'm four gonna, out of yeah, six. I'm so you, you guess it on... F- guess four out of six. Yeah, I'm For me, it's it. more interesting, and then this is the last thing we'll talk about Wordle, and then we can talk about casual Instagram, mm-hmm. or we can fucking wrap it up. For me, it's more interesting... To share with friends that you can then, once you all um, share your anonymous journeys, then you can take a screenshot of your actual shit. And you can, it's interesting to see. And my friend has this theory, Lucas, you know Lucas, mm-hmm. has this theory that it's actually a fucking test by like psychologists. To, like, um, it's a peek into your psyche. Oh, it's a psyop or right? something. Yeah. So you start with like a word, a five letter word, penis, mm-hmm. right? Then you get whatever, some of the letters, mm-hmm. right? Then you yeah. go into like, you know, uh, broad, yeah. right? Or that's six. That's five letters, broad. Okay. Then you get into like throat or whatever. Booger. Book. What? No, that's yeah. No, that's six. Is it? <laughs> yeah. B O O. Fuck. Fuck. Dude, I'm <laughs> retarded. <laughs> it's just a funny like you can actually yeah, see no, people kind of like work their way. I'm trying to remember what words uh, Jenna used this morning. And you, here's my thing. This is how I know I'm fucking stupid. I'm like, damn, dude. I'm like, I don't know any five. I just proved right now how I don't know any five letter words, bro. Yo, I found a version where you can like extend the words. I did eight letter words how is that actually easier because there's fewer eight letter words yeah okay touche. it's all like pleat like steaming right which is surprising because again i don't know any five letter words exactly off the top. um yeah keep that shit off the fucking timeline because like it's a worthless brag i don't really understand the point oh it is oh, so it is a flex being because i guess some you could look at one and tell that it was like a good job right based on the colors or whatever yeah, like, get get it, it, truly, does anyone get it off rip? Has anyone ever just? I've never seen. I've seen guessed? two. I've seen a two. Dick sucking Ron got a two, but it was more of a stab because, mm. like, you have very little to work off of. Gotcha. So he just did. Uh, <laughs> this was an interesting look into Dick sucking Ron's psyche. First letter, first word, slave. Nice. <laughs> Jesus. And then the second word, which was the correct answer of the Beep. day, <laughs> favor. Oh, okay. 
Slave favor. I don't yeah. know. That was his fucking war journey. Yeah, I think uh, we can ask Thomas Jefferson what a slave favor. I might have be. not seen this shit. Yeah, shout out Sally Hemings. I've not seen this shit on Instagram so far. They stayed off the fucking Thank God. stories, off the yeah. casual IG, I, off the photo dumps. I want to. I want to talk about casual Instagram. Do you? Do you like? Do you like seeing this in your feed? Casual. So casual Instagram to me is two things, right? You have the photo dump, which has been around for a while and was definitely a trend, and then now the. Um, the ca- what do you call it? The casual snap, like the can did, right? The plan did. Yeah, the plan. Shout out to Taylor the- Lorenz. That's wow. her phrase. Killed it. Uh, shout out to Queen. The plan did. Uh, what do you think? Because, like, I'll say this. The last photo dump I saw was your girlfriend's photo dump. Mm. So, as somebody. Wait, like from, like, today? Uh, maybe, like, well, I, I mean, yesterday, maybe. I don't okay. remember. I, also, I don't know how the fucking feed is working these days, but, yeah. What do you think about these? And then I'll give my thoughts and we can wrap it up. I don't uh, Okay, I use Instagram. I watch. I basically do IG story. Mm-hmm. Um, I make sure to swipe out like every two people so that I don't actually watch like a fucking op. Okay. Right. Oh, like uh, posted five seconds ago and you're like the first person who viewed it. You're like, I'm a fucking loser. That's what you mean? Yeah. And then I'll like scroll for memes. I'm not really paying attention to like what people post for a photo. Them, I'll swipe through. Yeah. But it's kind of like, I don't know. It's inoffensive. I have been. I have thought of like, yo, like what if I would you do? Would you ever post a dump or and or planted? For me, it's more like, yo, what if I posted a photo that like had nothing to do with like my fit or like my life, or just like, yo, like here's a photo of this shit. So oh. art, yeah, on um, your artsy shit. And so it's like, yeah. but then it's so at this point, I I can't. I'm fucking trapped, bro. These fucking shack. I'm shackled to the Fitbit. Yeah. No, for sure. And and that's why I've been thinking a lot about this because I too you, feel this sh- is what you expend your brain energy on. I, I too feel shackled. Your wife is playing Sudoku and board <laughs> games and reading books. And you're just like, oh. I too feel dump, to dump or not to dump. <laughs> That is thy question. Um, no, I too feel shackled, shackled in a prison of my own design, but I'll say this, right? Instagram stories exist for a reason. And like you just said, I too prefer them. And I think most people do as well. It's, it, it's great, right? If you are posting, because I'm guilty, guilty of a planted, and I will say I think planted might be the, oh, the fu- are you fucking kidding the, me? Yeah. the future of kind of fit picks where it's those, like. Those aren't that ended, bro. No, no, I know. I'm not trying to make it like I'm not trying to like if anybody in in earnest posts a plan it and thinks that anybody even remotely believes that that was like an unplanned cutesy moment, you're fucking lying to yourself. So I'm not even talking about that. But when I think of a photo dump, okay, if you are posting artsy f- photographs, right? You're bad at being a photographer, so keep that shit on IG stories so you can get fucking through it and you're not clogging up the feet. If you're using a dump, the fucking Trojan horse, a fit pick, like I'm saying, like I said before on slide three, just post a fit pick. That's why you're doing the dump anyway. It's almost like you're trying to justify this thing. Don't do that. You're not fooling anyone. And you know what? If one of those no, pictures. People are, ga- people are gaming the algo. That's what it is. Sure, of course. But you could also do a slideshow of a fit pick. Give me well, another we, angle. You and I, we did a fit pick meme or like. Like multiple fit picks or like fit pick detailed fit. Yeah, and I like that. Yeah, and I get that. But you could also do, listen, if you're trying to show a detail of your fit and your fit, just keep it to the two slides. I don't need the fucking, you know, artsy bullshit. Life lately. Yeah, and guess what? If you are a good photographer and one of those pictures is an artsy slapper, just feel free to post that on the feed. Don't give me all the other bullshit that could go on Instagram stories. That's my point. Yeah, it's very... It's, Shape up or ship the fuck out. It's just very transparent and yeah. as the tr- most trans-friendly podcast. It's a Yo. lie we all believe in, but at the same time, we can still have some self-awareness, people. Hunter Schaefer, Nikita Dragon, Photo Dumps. We are the most trans friendly podcast yeah. in the motherfucking world. Um, this has been another boys only running of the boys. Do I still say that? Yeah. We- welcome to the weekly running of the boys. Yeah, you do. <laughs> um, We've been off for a bit. Who's our guest next week? Nick Wooster. Nick. Yo, fucking classic Wooster. fucking pod. Yo, uh, there's a slur that has dropped within the first 45 seconds. <laughs> yeah, all that rip, has dude. never been uttered on this podcast or the previous podcast never that shall not be named i don't know if that's true i think abs- i think there's been a spicy nope, no it has never been damn it is a brand new slur and it is not the n-word <laughs> thank god no um, um <laughs> yeah so nick wooster and then yeah we got yo i will say you and i have been working our asses off mainly because we got behind because we were on vacation for a month well and we're we about got- to go on vacation again yeah. but yo we've got some fucking blastics in the chamber wooster and jenna next week and then some fun stuff coming Coming up after that as well. Uh, we'll catch you. What's after that? I don't even fucking know. Who we recorded with yesterday. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. All right. Chef, hit that motherfucking outro music.